Welcome to the Creative Obsession Podcast. My name is Carrie, and I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm coming to you from Scappoose, Oregon, which is just outside of Portland. And today is December 8th, 2016. We are full speed ahead into Christmas and Christmas preparations. Um, if you are new, thank you so much for joining me. This is a, a channel that where I talk about projects that I'm working on, whether it's quilting, sewing, knitting, um, mostly that's what it is. Every once in a while there's another craft project thrown in there. Um, if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. Um, and I appreciate the fact that you're here. If this is not something that's for you, feel free to move on. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but I do appreciate if you are here and you are watching. Um, last episode was a little bit funky. I tried filming in a different location and I think it just threw my whole groove off. So I'm back in my studio again and, um, and we're going to, we're going to roll. I'm not sure if I'm going to have another episode before Christmas, uh, just because I, I usually record every two weeks. And so in two weeks is the week of Christmas. And, um, I don't know if I'm going to have anything to show. I don't know if I'm going to have time to record. And so if I do, I will. If I don't, then I'll see you next year. <laughs> so anyway, um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry. We have a Ravelry group for the Creative Obsession podcast. And um, I will put all that stuff on the screen so you can see it. And um, yeah, so that's about it. <laughs> Um, I like to start the show with what's on my wall. So we are going into the So Now What section. Uh, the quilt that's on the wall behind me is um, one that was made by many of my friends. Um, I regularly went on our quilt retreat, which I've talked about in the past with the same group of friends, and we did it for years and years. We haven't done it anymore, and I kind of feel like it's kind of fallen apart. People's lives have just changed too much that it's really hard for us to all get together. But uh, back several years ago, we decided to, oftentimes you'll do like a block of the month. We decided to do a row of the month. And so we, every month would meet for lunch. We started off having, we were going to, oh gosh, how can I explain this? We were gonna make a quilt or have a quilt made for us. And so we got to pick whatever fabrics we wanted and we would supply all the fabric. So you had your background fabric, a main fabric, um, and some, some companion fabrics that went with it. And then um, once a month, we would switch who got whose tub or bag or whatever you kept it in. And we had, had decided as a group what the theme was going to be each month. Like for Valentine's Day, for February, we made hearts. And for, I think it was for March or April, we did flowers or tulips or something. And so there was a different theme each one. Um, quite often, row, row, blo row quilts uh, go, but they hang vertically. And I, and I thought, you know what? I want a Christmas themed one. I know I'm never going to make a Christmas quilt. Um, I would probably never use a Christmas quilt, but I will hang one up. So I decided to use Christmas fabrics and supplied what I needed for that. And I wanted my rows to go vertical because I like to do things a little different. <laughs> I like to join in on things, but I like to kind of do it in a different way. So it's not like everybody else's. And I'll talk about that a little bit more on what I'm going to come up with, with, um, in yarn stuff. So anyway, um, we would we would meet for lunch and swap each other's things and for that next month you had whoever's tub of stuff i had made a big duffel bag and put mine all in a duffel bag but um we would you would make however many blocks it was six blocks seven blocks i don't know whatever it was and you could add fabrics to what they had if you had something that went with it and it was just a lot of fun and each tub or with each uh, person's quilt supplies we all had some sort of little spiral notebook or some sort of little notebook where we could write in it we write a little something about what we thought of when we made this particular row for you or 
how you came about it or whatever, some little note of something. And I still have my notebook of um, everybody's notes on what they did. And so it's really special to me because it was made for me by some really, really good friends. And so it only comes out at Christmas. Um, I decided to hang it up here this year because I've been up in my studio a lot um, making things for my shop and stuff. And I thought, I'm going to decorate up here. And so I have my little Christmas tree. I have my fireplace going. <laughs> um, I turned the sound down. Otherwise, it's crackling. <laughs> I didn't want that to be picked up on the mic. So I'm all festive and Christmassy up here with my Christmas quilt. And... Um, I play my Christmas music and it's my happy little workshop. <laughs> so it doesn't have a name, it doesn't have a pattern. It's just, it's just special, special Christmas, uh, Christmas themed quilt. Um, I was getting some stuff out because I have been trying to decorate some and I wanted to show something and I know it might be a little bit late. It's still early enough in the month that maybe you may have time to make this. And it's not new, it's not something I invented, but um, it's cloth napkins that can look like a Christmas tree. And I used to host my family's Christmas here at the house, here at my house. And um, so this is what I would use on the table at Christmas time. And so I just wanted to share it in case you hadn't ever seen it. All it is, is a half circle. And so I chose Christmas because it's a, I did a tree, but I did red on one side and green on the other. Um, just cut, I think I based this on an 18 inch circle, but you can do it whatever size you want. Um, but I felt like 18 inches laid on your lap pretty well. And so depending on how you fold it, will give you, like you could see this one, the green is the main color and the red pops out. And the way you fold it is, oh, I don't know if I can show this up here. I'm sure there's videos on it, but you fold, you fold it over. So the red's going to be the main color. You fold it over so that you have, I don't know, three inches. And then you fold it back over on both sides and you have a Christmas tree. And so it's just a fun way to spruce up your table if you want to do cloth napkins and have a little something special. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember where I saw this because I've had these for a few years now. Um, I just sewed the, the half circles uh, right sides together, leaving a little space to turn it back inside out or right side out, um, pressed it all out, and then just top stitched. And I top stitched with a gold... Um, gold thread to just have a little bit of, I don't know, sparkle, different something. And uh, they're really cool. And they look really neat on a table when you, um, when you decorate your table and you have all your Christmas plates and all that kind of stuff out. So um, yeah, so that's kind of fun. Um, another thing I <laughs> did yesterday, which was a lot of fun and it's not sewing related, but um, this Sunday I'm doing um, a 5K race. I'm going to walk. I don't run unless someone's chasing me, but I'm going to do a 5k. It's the holiday 5k. Um, there's a half marathon or a 5k. Um, I did walk a half marathon a couple years ago. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever do it again. It was fine, but I feel like I checked that off my bucket list. I don't have to do it again. So I'm going to do a 5k and it's a bunch of friends and I are going to are joined in. So I picked up my bib and I, you can put your own name, you put whatever name you want on your bib. So I'm going to go as Tinkerbell. Because I thought, why not? <laughs> when do I ever get to be Tinkerbell? <laughs> so my bib has Tinkerbell as my name. And I thought, well, Tinkerbell needs a tutu. So <laughs> I made yesterday a Christmassy tutu. <laughs> I made it really big so it'll fit around my jacket. Because um, it's really cold and quite possibly going to be raining. So... Um, so I, I put on my jacket and kind of measured around and gave me some extra room. And I did it so that I took a piece of tool and um, used that as the waistband so I can tie it. So I can tie it as, as loose or tight as I want to. So the way I did it is I just got some six inch tool. I have this, just happened to have this 16 and a half inch ruler. And I just, this was on a spool and I just wrapped it around. Hold this up 
just wrapped it around and around and around and around and around and then just cut one end and it gave me the strips. And then you, I just do the whole like loop around kind of thing and I've got myself a Christmas tutu. So I'm going to do that on Sunday. Um, we are supposed to get snow today, snow and maybe freezing rain, which I'm really hoping we get the snow part because I love when it snows. Um, so it was supposed to come in last night. Now they're saying more like 11 o'clock this afternoon. So we'll see what happens. Um, I hope it does because I could sit and watch it snow for hours. It is just, it's mesmerizing. It's magical. I absolutely love it. I'm like a little kid when it snows, um, especially if I don't have to go anywhere and drive in it. <laughs> it's really good. Um, I grew up in Southern California where it doesn't snow. We would go to the snow. We would go cut our Christmas tree or go into the snow, but I had never seen it snow until I moved to Oregon when I was 18. So I hadn't seen, never saw it actually snow till I was almost an adult really. And it's still very magical to me. I remember I worked downtown in Portland at a bank and it started to snow and I was like, oh my gosh. And I went running outside and just like stood in the snow because it's just so cool. And I will still do that today. <laughs> so I'm hoping that today will snow. Don't like the freezing rain so much just because it makes things dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous to drive in. It's a high possibility of losing power because the power lines get coated in ice. But, you know, if it snows, I'm happy and I will just sit and I will probably not get a whole lot of work done <laughs> because I will just want to sit there and watch it snow. So, um, so that's the, what is going on? Oh, <laughs> it's weird. The wind's blowing. And so it's blowing things at my window, which is weird because I'm on the second story and things don't usually hit the window. So something's moving in and I hope it's snow. Okay, so now I want to move into uh, some knitting stuff and some yarny goodness. Um, I've been really working hard on getting some Christmas gifts made. I had shown on Instagram that I was making dishcloths. And so I've been making dishcloths since I've made several. Um, there, I, I just wanted an easy pattern. I know you can do like fancy patterns and stuff like that, but I knew I needed to make a lot of them and I just needed it to just go fast. Plus with like variegated, um, yarns and stuff, you can't really see the design a whole lot. So I just did, it's kind of on the, it is on the bias, just a square dishcloth and uh, Jim and I went to we just went to our local Joann's and um, I just picked up the sugar and cream my, made by Lily I think you can find this pretty much anywhere um, somebody had asked me what my favorite cotton is this is really what's local to me and so for this kind of thing this is what I would use um, I looked it up I just looked up to see what I could find and I found um, Stacy Perry from very pink has a pattern free pattern it was exactly what I needed and I like the fact that it's on the bias so that some of this yarn which is stripey looks really cool and then even when it's just variegated it still looks pretty cool so I picked colors that would go with the different people that we're giving it to and um, I'm giving each household to to go along with our other gifts that we're doing. And then I found at the dollar store, I found these little, they're kind of like little mini lunch pails and they had different Christmassy designs. And so that's how I'm gonna wrap them because, let me show you, if I fold it in half and then I roll it, um, I can fit two in here perfectly. They just fit perfect. So I will fit put another one in here and then maybe some other little goodies and then just put a tag on it and we're good to go. So that's been really, really fun. Um, I can do one in an evening. Uh, working with cotton is hard on my hands and I don't know if it's because um, it just doesn't have any give. Cotton's pretty much just what it is. Um, but my hands have been really sore. I only need to make three more and I was knitting furiously. Like I have got to knit like two a day or whatever. Cause for some reason I was thinking we were getting rent together with Jim's family this weekend. And he goes, no, we, we're not getting, it's like, you still have another whole week. It's like, oh, I can kind of relax and knit on something else. And so I have been kind of taking the time to just sort of switch off. I do still need to get the three done, but I have until next weekend to do it. 
So I feel like I feel like I can do it now. <laughs> but I was like frantically just, I've got to keep knitting, got to keep knitting. And my hands were cramping. And every morning I wake up and I can hardly move my fingers. It takes a little while for things to kind of stretch out. Um, but I'm getting it done and I'm really liking how they're turning out. So, um, so that's been a really fun project to, to work on. But I have, because of that, I haven't been getting a whole lot of, of just my personal knitting done. But I will, I'll be able to get into that once, uh, once my Christmas knitting is done. Um, something I showed last episode was, oh, I don't, oh yeah, I do have the pattern was this pattern for uh, felted slippers by Lavender Hill, Farm, Lavender Hill Knits. And so um, I got my yarn like the day that I had recorded and um, I realized I ordered the wrong yarn. I didn't get bulky weight, I got worsted weight. And I thought, well, let me just see if this works. And so I made a slipper and I felted it and this is felted. So like, this is huge. <laughs> And I started, I started with one for my son's partner because he's got the smallest feet out of the three men that I was going to make them for. And this is huge. I know I can wash it again and felt it some more, but I just don't think it's going to felt down enough. I think this really needed the bulky weight yarn. And then I thought, you know, I don't even know if they're really going to even wear them. So I could have probably doubled up, but then I didn't want to have to figure out the math of of altering the pattern to make that work. So this is a no-go. I still have the yarn. I'll be able to do something else with it. Um, if I make Jim a pair, I'll have, I'll have to just order some more yarn because it, this didn't work. I could try a smaller needle, which I thought of doing, but I wouldn't get the same gauge. And so then I didn't know if that would even still work. And I thought, you know, I, it was, I don't know that they'll wear them. I really don't, don't really think that they will. So I'm bagging it. I'm just calling it quits. Um, I will still try again, but not for Christmas. Um, so that's a hoe, kind of. <laughs> it was a hoe fail. <laughs> um, I showed last week I do have a hoe. No, I have a foe. I have a finished object. Um, I finished Jim's hat. So this is just a vanilla hat. Um, it looks small, but it does fit. It will fit on my head. Um, it's just a little short for my head, which I think will fit Jim perfectly. So this was out of my yarn, Hidden Beauty in a worsted weight. Um, I absolutely love this colorway. So this only used 43 grams or something like that. I, I weighed it. So I have over 50 something grams, like 52 three grams or something left over. And I thought, oh, I can still knit something with it. So what I think I'm gonna knit is, I'm gonna knit a, a headband ear warmer. I don't wear hats, but I do wear those. So last year I made my first cabled project and I, this matches my jacket. So I made it to match my jacket. And this was from, it's called Not Work Cabled Headband by Lucy Leibenstein. And um, it was the first time I ever tried cables. I did the cables with a uh, double DPN, double pointed needle. I now have a cable needle. So I'm, I'm anxious to, to do another cabled project. This was perfect because it's not a huge commitment. It was a really great pattern. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting really distracted because it's almost like a tornado out there. Things are blowing like this way. <laughs> it's just distracting. Anyway, sorry. Um, it was, I, I could maybe do one less repeat because it fits around my head and it's nice, but it's a, it's a little loose. Like I could maybe have it a little bit tighter, but it's really nice because of the cables. It's a little thicker, so it keeps my ears warm because um, that, I, because of short hair, my ears get really cold. So I was thinking with my leftover, to make another one of these. I don't know if you'll see the cables so much, but I do really like this pattern. This yarn that I used was Cascade Pacifica. So it's um, Superwash Merino, I think it's 100%. Um, it was really nice yarn to work with. And I, could, I have you know other colors of this and I could just stick with this, but I thought this would be really, because I think this color would be good. 
It, it's good. I wear that when I take Millie for a walk. Um, when it snows and we go outside, I can wear this. So I think that's going to be a project that I'll take with me when we go away for Christmas. Um, the last few years, we've kind of started a new tradition um, that Jim and I and our son and his partner go away for Christmas. And um, it's just been... It's just been really cool, and we've all just really enjoyed it a lot. Um, for the boys, it's like their vacation. Um, we sp split the cost, and we sp we found uh, last year we found a really nice place right on the coast. It's like right on the beach, and it was it fit us perfectly. And so we rented it the same place again this year. So I'm looking forward to doing that, and then we just sit and we play games and watch movies and just hang out together and have some really, really good quality time. And so it's just a very valuable uh, time for me to, to spend that with my son. Uh, he only lives a half a mile from me, but we don't see him all that often because he works graveyard shift, swing shift, swing shift. So his schedule is way different. And I try not to be, um, I give him his space. I try to just give him his space. So we don't see him as often as I would like to. But um, spending that Christmas time together is just really special. So it's kind of been our new tradition uh, three years in a row now that we've gone away. Oh, this will be the third year. So um, I like it. I like this tradition a lot. And so hopefully we'll keep it up. Um, so I'm going to... Um, Oh, okay. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about my whips that I have. I, I have made very little progress on my Vente shawl, which I've shown in the previous episodes because of working on the dishcloths. So it's not enough of a difference for you to really see because it's only a couple of inches and it's real hard for me to show that. So I'm probably not going to show that until it's finished. Um, very little sock knitting. I did work on my Mystic Spiral a little bit, <laughs> not much. Because I got another thing in my yarn. It's the second one in that much space. And so I got there and I was just like, oh, forget it. So it's, I mean, it's not a major big deal. It just, two in that much yarn is kind of bothersome. So I'm going to cut it off, keep going. So I got to the point now where I believe I just knit in a circle. Although it still looks like I'm at an angle. I don't know. And then, but I'd have never made the toe up. So I don't know how far to go. So I have to look into how big of a foot I need. I know when I'm going cuff down, I knit so much from the cuff to the heel, do the heel from the heel to the, to the toe. So I'm not sure if it works the same way going backwards. Um, so yeah, so now I'm, I think I just have to knit in a circle, knit, knit in the round until I get to doing the heel. And then somebody just posted today on Instagram, she uh, tagged me because she used one of my yarns and it was a new pattern that I want to check out and it was uh, Toe Up With A Difference by Wendy Johnson and it's a free pattern and it's, it's basically the, uh, the gusset that I love that fits me really well. Um, this Mystic Spiral uh, sock uses the OMG heel, which um, I tried on Michelle's sock and it's still a bit tight. Um, it's starting to snow. Yay, it's starting to snow. Okay. Oh, oh gosh, that's really going to distract me. Um, so anyway, I really like having a heel cuff, or not a heel cuff, a heel gusset. And so I think I might, when I get to doing the get to doing the gusset or the heel. See, I got super distracted. Sorry. When I get to doing the, um, the heel on those mystic spirals, I'm going to do, do her heel on the toe up with a different sock. <laughs> See, the snow is totally messing me up because I just want to sit and watch it. Okay. It's just starting and it's really little. So, um, I'll let it build up just a little bit more. So, that's my, I'm trying, I gotta, I gotta move forward with that. Um, socks for me, I generally do vanilla socks and I, I'm kind of realizing, even though these are going to look super cool because I mean, the design with the striped, so with the striped yarn is looking really neat. I enjoy the mindlessness of a vanilla sock and not having to look at a pattern. I can just sit, get lost in thought, listen to a book, whatever. 
and not count anything. And so I will finish these socks. They aren't my go-to grab them and go kind of thing, but um, I'll, I'll get them done. Um, so knitting wise, I think that's really it. I'm sorry, this is gonna be pretty short. Um, I did get a new purchase and it just came yesterday. I bought a new bag and I got one of Jenny's from the Lone Larch. Look at how perfect this is. It's purple forest with sparkly snowflakes. It's like so me, it's so me and I love it. And it's well made and I, I, I just, I can't wait to put something in it. So um, snowflakey kind of silver on the inside. It's got the batting kind of interfacing, which I like. So yeah, sorry, I didn't hold it up high enough. Thanks, Jenny, I love it. I don't think she watches, but it's super cool. Um, if you don't watch her podcast, you should, because she's just she's just kind of fun. She's just a cool, uh, cool gal. Um, something that I think was really fun, and I just watched it this morning, is um, I've talked about the podcast Die Another Day with Christina and Amanda, and Christina just did a little tutorial. It's like five minutes long or something of how she, when she changes to do like a, a contrasting heel or toe, how she kind of weaves in the ends as she knits. And it, it was great. It's like, you all should go look at it. So it's Die Another Day and it's the inner, I don't know what she called it. It's, she just put it up. So go check it out. Um, it's just neat how she, it's just the way she kind of grabs the yarn and I'm thinking, it's even a good way when I'm doing color work of how I can kind of keep things twisted up when you go for like long strands. Um, so recommend looking at that. Um, last episode, I wanted to do a giveaway. Okay, sorry. I'm a little scattered. Okay, so last episode, I uh, showed that I wanted to do a giveaway. Two different people are going to get um, two skeins of this Knit Picks Lace Weight stained glass colorway super soft yarn um it is alpaca yeah alpaca and silk so really cool and so uh, i posted a question in the pod uh, posted a question in the ravelry group for the podcast asking whether you liked white lights or colored lights. And it was really interesting to read people's uh, responses because it was it was really mixed. And some people do like white on the outside and colored on the inside on their tree or white on the tree and colored on the outside or, or whatever it was. Um, so we had uh, 34 responses, one was mine, so we had 33 all together, but I did random number generator this morning and um, so I picked between two and 35 and number, the first one I got was number 23, which is Mama Giff, who is Lee out of Massachusetts. You get two skeins of lace weight yarn. I hope you make something really, really pretty. Um, she preferred the simplicity of the white lights, which is why I like the white lights. Um, and then I picked uh, another one, and it was number 34, which is Sally from Idaho. And uh, she likes white the best as well. So kindred white light people. So if you two would uh, message me on Ravelry, I will get this out to you as soon as I can. Uh, probably not today <laughs> or maybe not tomorrow because if it gets icy, I'm not going anywhere. But as soon as I can, I'll get these mailed out. Um, you may have them before Christmas. I'm not guaranteeing anything because once it's out of my hands, it's out of my hands. Um, so really short episode. I know I say that every time and sometimes I just ramble, but um, that's it. I, will ha I do have a shop update that is a pretty big update. There's some kits that I'm putting out in the shop and stuff like that. So if it's something that you're interested in, then stick around. If not, um, thank you for joining me and I hope you have a fabulous holiday doing whatever you love to do and are with people that you love. Um, so if you would like to stick around for the shop update, we'll go into that next. Okay, so now for my shop update, I've been working really hard on um, making up some kits and um, dyeing up some new colorways. So I want to go into some of the new colorways first. It's still snowing. So this is denim. It is a, just a good blue denim. So I've got denim. This is a new one. It's called Fireball. Um, 
different colors of like a warm yellow into sort of a pinkish red. It's not a true, true red. It's really cool. Um, another one that I did, this is called Hoodoo. And this was, reminded me of the Hoodoos in Bryce Canyon. Uh, we went to Bryce Canyon a few years ago and was, it's just, it's a magical place. That whole area in Southern Utah is just truly magical. And we spent like two and a half weeks down there and we hiked nearly every day and saw all over, went to Zion. Um, when it went down into Arizona, went through Antelope Canyon, which is like really magical. So the hoodoos are the the uh, columns of rock that are created by wind and water and stuff like that. And it's the redness of the rock and it was just pretty. It's got little bits of like a turquoise blue in it. Um, I also did it kind of in that same color, patina. I wanted to do something that was like when copper patinas. And so this is kind of an uh, aqua turquoise with, with spots of, of a good copper color. Also, what did I call this one? I have to look it up. Oh, crud. What did I call this one? Through the woods. This is through the woods. So, um, similar in colors to Hidden Beauty, but a little bit darker, an over dye of darker and the greens, like a greener. Anyway, it's greens and blues and, and browns and it just reminded me of the woods. So this is through the woods. Um, what did I call this one? Oh, Northern Lights because it looks like the Northern Lights. That is something that's on my bucket list. I need to go somewhere where I can see Northern Lights. I did look it up because I told Jim I said we need to go do that and um, unfortunately the best time to do it is um, in the winter time in like Iceland or Norway, which I would love to go to either of those areas, but I would like to go where I could actually go and see things, which you're not going to do when it's freezing cold and everything's covered in ice and snow. So, and, and the likelihood that we'd ever go do a trip like that, it's pretty slim. So I uh, will have to enjoy the Northern lights just through my yarn. <laughs> um, this color is called, you're making me blush. It is a very nice blushy pink and a soft gray, very soft colorway. Um, would look pretty by itself or paired with something else, like you pair it with this blue. Yeah, that's good. Um, so the kits that I have, this one is called, this is Will You Be Mine? So it is this drawstring bag with these cute little sheeps and some of the sheeps are made up with little hearts and the yarn that matches. So this yarn, similar to um, You're Making Me Blush, but a little bit more intense in the colors. And then you get this cute little sheepy stitch marker. Um, I got these, the new, I, for new to me, the um, kind of safety pin type. I don't know if you can see them type of holder because you can use them as a stitch marker by just turning it and using the bulb part on your needle or you can use it as a progress keeper because it's a pin and you just hang it the other way and this this kit comes with the yarn the stitch marker progress keeper thing and the drawstring bag the inside of these bags is a real pretty coral fabric um, with uh, coral drawstrings and the other kit that I have is Will You Be Mine? And it's a navy blue background with yarny hearts in like pink and coral and green and white and gray. And so this is the yarn that I've got to match this with those colors in it. I chose to do more of a mint green instead of the olive green that was on here because I just thought this looked fresher. And this one comes with uh, the stitch marker progress keeper that is a heart. And this is it reskained, so you can kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like when it's knitted up. So um, this is one skein. I just, you'll get this <laughs> with the bag and the stitch marker. I'm, and oh, and the inside of this is a gray with white hearts on it. Um, I'm doing 
going to put this in. It's all going to go in a shop update on Saturday the 10th, right? 8, 9, 10. Yeah. And at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm doing the kits as a pre-order so that I know how many to make. I've got some made. I don't want to make more than I that people are interested in. So I'm going to do it as a pre-order and I, they will ship the first week of January. And so then you will have that color, that bag, that kit um, to make like Valentine's socks or whatever, just to start your new year off with a new kit. So um, yeah, so that's it. That was all of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, go check out my shop, um, watch for the shop update and um, have a good holiday. I hope to see you guys again before Christmas, but if not, happy holidays and thank you so much for joining me.